That's the one we've been looking for, Brad, for the uh, for the entire match. The little forehand like this one, and he sets the big blistering forehand down there. And watch what it does. There's that squash shot, that return there, no pace on it. And then he's able to create the angle. And look at that ball move off the court. That's a tremendous shot. Brad, is there Jesus. any guy on the tour who can find, you know, the short court the way Agassi can? I, I don't think so, and I think it would be great if he could use the width of the court more. I think there's maybe only one guy. Thomas Muster hits those shots awfully well on the clay as well. Deuce again. Agassi's had so much trouble on this side. Must have served three times. First game, his first serve game of the match, he had put in love here and then lost it. That was the first break and then uh, a set game again. At 5-4. Yeah. Again, Agassi gets into the net in the volleying position. You can see the stutter step. Not a very good reply from Fromberg and uh, the added strength there from Agassi. He hits a high backhand volley for a winner. Tough shot to play. I think uh, he's abandoned his wide serve here. He's had poor success with that today. And the delight of the crowd here in St. Petersburg, Agassi holds on, we're on serve, he was a break point down in that game. Did you see where that last serve was directed? To the forehand. To the forehand side, I think there's a change of strategy coming in here now, I think Tom Gorman said, hey, forget the backhand fella, you're not doing too well over there, get to the forehand side a little more often. You guys probably agree with that, don't you, because he was kicking that thing up into the backhand, high into the backhand, that doesn't hurt Fromberg at all. I think it's very strange that, you know, he has a great forehand but doesn't return serve as well on the forehand. And uh, I think his backhand's weaker from the baseline, but returns much better balls. on that backhand. Thank you. You know, he doesn't have to worry about setting up Long and then hitting his backhand. So he can hit it harder. He can, you know, he can use both those hands and really whack at it. Whereas on the run, during a rally, he's he's not afforded that same. Oh, sure. Just long that drop shot worked on that occasion, but it not been kind to him so far he, he's been hitting it awfully deep Long and normally he gets that thing a lot closer to the net i think that's allowed uh, richard to, to close in on those Five three. six please stay on the court any six stop moving <laughs> Stop moving. Uh, Stop moving. Then a very good uh, French accent. Uh, yeah. he's, 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 a, he's the kind of guy you could just uh, bring a rebel. He's, he's the most looking fellow you can tell, but you just like to listen and talk sometimes. The elegant Frenchman finally just had, well, hell, I'm in, I'm in the States. I better talk the there, English language. He was out there at the pool today with the oil on, getting a good suntan before the match today. Cup is all about getting the crowd going and Agassi look how he goes back he sets himself up he knows Fromberg's looking for the one down the line and he went for the angle cross court it's a crowd pleasing shot there but in truth everybody in this booth expected him to win it Fifteen forty. I think that this pumping here for, for Andre will really get the crowd going. I think the crowd has kind of been a sleeping giant here. They really want to erupt, but they haven't had much to erupt about yet. Well, this is all part of it because uh, uh, 
if he hits second serve, Agassi's all over it. He's got two big first serves here, and it's set up the points, and he's hit winners. Tough to keep doing that, though. It's a big point right here. Now let's see. That's a good second serve right there to run around and bust a forehand on. It's such uh, high voltage stuff. <laughs> you see, I mean, you're running around the shot, whack the thing there, you either makes a winner or, 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 or an error. Well, that's one thing, when he does run around it, he's made up his mind what he wants to do. He's not going to try and play another three or four strokes. He certainly doesn't hit it like me. He runs around and nerfs it. Oh! Boy, you haven't seen many of those from Fromberg. I think I took a little bit of a bad bounce on him and popped up on him, but that's a, that's a tough error. I think you've been kind to him. Here's the return of serve, and he either looks out of the corner of his eye at Agassi, oh, takes his ball, takes his eye off the ball, or a bad bounce there. I think it came up a little higher, but uh, he was a little lazy on that forehand, huh? He Break point over, number four for this game. David at Captain Neil Fraser in disgust. I can try to run around the uh, backhand again here. College football doubleheader tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Live coverage, number 3 Miami against San Diego State. That's at San Diego State at 7.30 Eastern Time, 4.30 on the coast, the east, the west coast. Number 6 Florida and number 8 Florida State. That's tomorrow at 7.30 Eastern Time, live here on ESPN. Bragging right to Florida there, huh? Really. Quiet, please. This is Thank Davis you. Cup, the final for 1990. USA and Australia. In the second set, Agassi serving with a break, 3-2, he lost the first set. Their percentages have got a little better, Fred. Yes. In fact, a lot better. They were way down. 8 of 23 points on second serves. Though. That's not too good. Looks like one of my percentages. Well, it allows Fromberg to get around, and he's like Agassi. Give him that short ball. He does some damage with it. I just have to get out the old telecast there, and you're always ranking on my second serve. You're not usually this self-effacing. I don't like this, but I want you to tell us how good you are. You're not bad, you know. <laughs> He knows he's got a lousy second set. <laughs> we got a couple of birds right there, yeah. That's right. Fifteen thirty. Every time he looks like he, he's going to get ahead yeah. and start dominating, he plays a couple of sloppy points and gets the guy back into the match mentally. Aaron Crickstein. Behind him, Nick Voluntary. He goes way back with Voluntary. He should have. He's been coached for a long time. Voluntary, I guess he's coach now, of course. And Crickstein was a hero of the, of the tie against Czechoslovakia winning both this match. turned up for this. Oh. It, it is nice to see. Matter of fact, uh, I'll keep Tempest in 
Germany whether he was going to shine. Yeah. Look, no, I, w I wouldn't think about going. Of course, I think that within a year's time he'll probably be playing Davis Cup for the USA. I, I think sooner. the 1980s Czechoslovakia over Italy and then the USA versus Argentina what a match that was in Cincinnati USA over France again that was in Grenoble then Australia over Sweden that was in Australia on grass Sweden over the USA in 1984 then Sweden again Australia Sweden again and then twice these last two years West Germany over Sweden in the final that's what everybody out there is playing for the Davis Cup the big reason the there. Davis. Cliff also, Germany winning it the last two years. Uh, they had a big problem this year. They lost to Argentina down in Buenos Aires. And the main reason for that, possibly, Boris Becker didn't go along and play Davis Cup for West Germany this year. But he is going to play next year, by the way. <laughs> 4 2 for the USA in the second set. And Germany and the USA are in the same half of the Davis Cup next year. Mexico in the first round, and then Canada or Spain, if the USA wins that first round match. And then if Germany gets through, it will be Germany in the semifinals. I think that's a fairly good draw for the United States. That would be in the USA. I agree with you. I think they've got a good, uh, good opportunity to come this far again next year. next year USA and Mexico this is the top off as you can see Germany will play Italy in the first round Argentina New Zealand Canada all in the same section as we just said the first round will be played at the German club in Mexico City there's the bottom half Australia Yugoslavia Sweden all in there German club in Mexico City is a relatively small place to play so the crowds really get your attention pretty good say we played there 86 indoors it was the same indoor clay in about a 17,000 seat arena yeah, but the German club will be even tougher because the crowd are, are so much closer than them. I tell you, they're crazy, the fans down there. They really get juiced up. After every point of double fault, they go crazy. Same kind of thing, although maybe not as wild in Austria. I'm sure it took Chang and Agassi by surprise. 30-15. Bromberg there, good reach, good solid swing on that one, good extension and follow through. It's only his second ace of the day though. Took the word right out of my mouth. It was a really good extension there. Good place. Oh. He could have said to him, don't talk to me directly, speak to your captain. Rubel has just told Fraser the ball was out. Watch. He flicks this forehand and the ball does. It hits the net and he's robbed there because if it had not hit the net, it would have stayed in, but it was well wide. The ball was clearly wide. 
Now look at him pointing to the mark as his head. That was out. Let's go to the video tape right there. Mary, you didn't hear what Rubo uh, said to Agassi, did you? Well, no, Agassi just said that, you know, it was out, you know, and then Gorman said to Rubo that it, the guy immediately said he was on site, and Rubo never questioned it. Rubo knew it was one, too. So if he knew it was why, why didn't he make an immediate overrule? Game point. You just want to stroll, get out of his chair and loosen up a bit, check the mark. About 14 hours ahead from here. Nine in the morning. A little, little after that. Yep. Channel 7 of Australia, A-R-E, A-R-D rather from Germany, then TVE from Spain, F-R-3. You remember them from our coverage in Paris at the French Open and the Paris Open indeed. Game point and break point for Agassi. Just a second ago, Farmer was sitting on the changeover thinking it was 4-3. Yeah, That's indeed. Right. Big turnaround. His last three points. Ah! Uh, Ron Berg is him, shot okay. his long five two. Agassi will serve when we come back with more of our live coverage. One of the major controversies of the Davis Cup tie was the surface. Well, what is behind the controversy? We asked the captain, Neil Fraser, what is your objection exactly? Just quite easy. The court surface to be used for the match should be in general use where and when we play the tie. And the court surface is not in general use when and where we play the tie. So Neil Fraser's concern was both that and the fact of the, the time. There is a new rule that, that is part of this Davis Cup competition starting next year, meaning there must be 22 hours between the start of the Davis Cup time one day and the next day. I don't like that at all. But Neil, Neil Fraser came down here three weeks before this time began, and he had asked the USGA for a list of red clay courts in the state of Florida where he can practice his team. And they gave him a list, and he gave up because he started calling these places, these clubs, and they said, oh, we haven't had red clay in years. Well, they had it over at Williams Island where Roy Emerson is over there, but it's not the same uh, No, it wasn't. not the same clay. It's right, they, they just decided the to stay in, and train at uh, East Lake Woodlands, the place where uh, Kim Warwick and Bob Butterfield uh, have, and they, they tried to slow down the court, make it as, as close to what this would be as possible. But it's been very frustrating for Fraser. In like fact, Darren Cahill has a place there, too. Well, Kim Warwick used to play Davis Cup for Australia. Bob Butterfield Wait. worked in the good old days with Harry Hopman. Now they have their own successful camp there. Oh, Double fault there from Agassiz. That's Got only his second of the day. The Fraser has been very noisy about the lighting of this uh, of the Sun Dome and the fact that uh, he said, well, I'm disappointed. We're playing in a baseball stadium. I was rather hoping we'd play in a tennis stadium for a Davis Cup final. 30-15 for Agassi serving for the second set. And now 30 all. Mary, um, God bless you, that uh, Australian accent of yours. Neither I was, was going to say, Mary, I'd have thought after being around me for a while, it would be a little bit better than Listen, that. Listen, I don't know how to no. talk anymore after hanging around you guys. The Suncoast Dome, by the way, was built in an effort to entice Major League Baseball to St. Pete. Beautiful arena. 
it's gorgeous, and in fact, they came extremely close to, to nailing uh, nailing down the Chicago White Sox. Big Jim Thompson, the governor of Illinois, had to literally turn back the clock at two minutes of midnight on the day uh, where he needed to get votes. It was two minutes to midnight for half an hour break before he got here. enough votes to build a new Comiskey Park. This is break point, second serve. This is the side that's been giving him in trouble the whole match. Three sloppy points from 30 love. Yep. Back to Duke. One Remember more he thing has two breaks, so it's serving him. One yes. more thing about the Sun Coast Dome. You wonder why why on earth do you put a dome over you know over, over this over St. Petersburg? Well the, the reason is it as anyone knows in the summertime it rains here about three o'clock every afternoon and as I said this was built specifically for baseball. So they domed it. They're trading a lot of unforced errors here right now, Cliffy. Yep, and this is set point. In fact, there have been more, a lot more unforced errors in the whole match than I thought there would be. I, I think that uh, I think a lot of that has to do with how high the ball is getting up on the guys. That is why that Andre Agassi has leveled this match at one match all. Best of five matches in this Davis Cup tie. This is the first match. In the second match, Darren Cahill will take on Michael Chang of the USA. Thank you. Playing progress, just about an hour and 29 minutes, 27 minutes. It's an hour and 29. 29. Your eyes are better than mine. Okay, Hill, as we said, and from Australia, will take on Michael Chang, best of five sets, second singles match of this Davis Cup tie. Michael Chang's mother, Betty, by the way, is interested in putting down this very same court down in his place in California for him to practice for the upcoming clay court season. And Darren Cahill, a nice guy known to his friends as the killer. No! Chang's another one, by the way, is not going down to Australia. Very surprising. That is it to you today? Very surprising because, I, I mean, I feel both those guys would play really well on that surface. Pat Cash on the right. John Fitzgerald, who will play Davis Cup doubles with him tomorrow here on ESPN. Our live coverage continues at 12.30 Eastern Time. And an all-star rooter. We've been hearing his voice all the way up here. Fitz, he's a good team man. Always has been. Yeah, he's a good guy. All the Australians are really good guys. shot again not working that time because it was short in the main he's been hitting that drop shot too long but he's been hitting him on big points which is surprising you know a lot of times you want to see that at 40 love or love 40 maybe make the guy move but he's been hitting him 30 all 30 40 points it's sloppy times Gone to? Yeah, he did break a string on that one. A couple of the others he's just changed. There you see Tom Gorman throw that one away. Over to get restrung. Berger almost gets hurt with the grab there. Game point, Australia. First game, third set. One set all. This is the Davis Cup 1990 final round. Cliff Rysdale, along with Daniel Carrillo at court side, Fred Stolle and Brad Gilbert. This is Andre Agassi that you're looking at. Sending lost the first set. You sound like an Oklahoma backfield, full house backfield. <laughs>
one set all in this Davis Cup tie, USA and Australia. We'll be back. That's the story of the second set there. First uh, percentages, Agassi uh, improved, and Richard Fromberg down under 50%. That tells the story there. The winners pretty much even, but unforced errors. Fromberg creeping in with a few more of those, and Agassi broke serve on two occasions to run out that set in 40 minutes. Fromberg, if he wants to get back in this match. The third set, a very important set, pivotal set, in most occasions, particularly in Davis Cup matches. Tough to come back after you've been in the locker room, get some help from your friends. Do you like that uh, break when it's uh, after the third set? I think I'd rather keep going. You know? I think the players now that it's tiebreakers, that's not because they're taking it because they're exhausted. It's just the rules that after three sets they get a ten minute break. I mean, playing a few Davis Cup matches, I personally don't like it because you're not used to stopping in a match. Well, you, you didn't like it in Australia, did you? No, it's just shocker. Huh? Well, Paul McNamee, I don't want to bring that up. <laughs> no, don't yeah, I don't want. No, I wouldn't be nasty to you, Brad. <laughs> uh, that was like a nightmare on Elm Street. Freddy Krueger was around. You were not good when you came back, Brad. You know. On grass. to see that shot up there. That's an excuse me overhead winner. David Market Great. on the right, he's president of the USTA. Gordon Jorgensen, chairman of the Davis Cup Committee. David Market on the left, excuse me. Jorgensen on the right. You know you're left and right. <laughs> no, you to. Well, I mean, Jorgensen is on the left of Market. We knew what you meant. Yeah. Game point, Agassi. One set all. I tell you, when he gets stretched out, he really slaps that sometimes for winner. He goes for that, like that squash forehand, you call it, that little chipper forehand. So it seems to me that's the place Andre needs to work, to stretch him out to the forehand, because he seems to do, he seems to make mistakes from that position. He doesn't get himself, he hits that off a much more an open stance on that side, and he can't create much. That's the shot I like to hit right there, the open stance. charge of the stats from that second set with the first serve of Fromberg at 44 percent he really has to pick that percentage up he's got to get up around 65 if he's to stay in this match I, uh, I think he's in trouble right here Fred. yeah he needs those cheap points and he's not getting them now that was a big serve right there and he, he let that point go let let Andre just chip that thing the baseline didn't get his uh, racket back and made a sloppy error there Four in the first city was in trouble. From Berg, one of the few occasions he goes into the net as a stutter step, but he has to really run forward to get underneath the ball to execute that overhead. Wasn't a very good lob from Agassi. He's had good success when he's come in. I don't think he's lost but one or two points when he's come in, huh? No, he always will. But he's been coming in on good approaches. Chipping charges from either guy in this match. I don't think you will. Either. No, you don't often see that from Agassi. And the two-handed players, you don't see much of that from them. Period, on any surface. No. 
you that this is the first match of five matches that will be played in the Davis Cup. The format looks like this. They play two singles matches in the first day. Then the doubles on Saturday, and then the reverse singles matches on the Sunday. Five matches in all, and obviously the first team to win three matches win the Davis Cup title. This is the final match of the Davis Cup for this year. Started out in this world group with 16 teams. Two are left, USA and Australia. Australians felt that their big chance may come in this very match here and it is starting to slip away. I tell you, uh, one thing I can see, the reason why Andre is drop shotting, I tell you, when Fromberg does get there, he doesn't really do anything with the drop shots when he is getting there, huh? This is break point for Agassi for the first break in the third set. One game off. He's got to do that against Agassi Fromberg. Hit the high stuff. Make Andre swing from over his shoulder. It's clearly frustrating. That's a tough shot to hit from up there. From up here, it looks like an easy shot, but that's a tough shot to hit right there. Oh! Dead even. One set all. One game all. Induced. opportunities Agassi at 50% also he's broken four times of eight this is a big one right here this if he gets this break I think he can run the set out that is why he played those big points well in general hasn't he Thunder? I mean, every time we think that, you know, Andre is getting the upper hand, it seems like, you know, he, he plays well from from when he's behind. Or, can, or should you put it the other way, that Agassi hasn't played the big points well. He's had so many uh, chances to hold serve and lost. I, I think he's played a little bit sloppy on, on opportunity points. Big serve, though, from Fromberg there. Yeah, tough to do much with that. Deuce. Another one. Three days. Fourth. Ace. He likes that one right up the tee. Well, he's so tall when he gets up to that. What's the extension here? He just gets up there and leans on this from out of a tree, straight down the line, bounces up way over the advertising signs back there. This is game point for Australia. I'll tell you, you know what I miss here is the gun, you know, how fast they're serving. That is wide, and Australia in trouble, but holds on. Two games to one on serve, third set, one set all. First match of this year's Davis Cup final. We had it in motion in our minds, but we had to come back home, and we had to see, could we do it? Uh, you know, and then going through the, the situation of uh, sending the information to the International Tennis Federation, the Davis Cup Committee, making sure that, that we were doing everything within the rules, uh, ending up uh, using American clay, which is fine, as all the players have said, this place is just like a European clay court, and that's really what we were trying to do. We were trying to get something that was going to be a quality court. The intent was certainly a good one. Now, why we picked clay was obvious to everybody in the tennis world, and that is, it's the least favorite surface of the Australians, and after just winning a match against the Austri Austrians and having the uh, a French champion and a French runner-up for the last two years, uh, it's not that difficult of a choice to make or a decision to make, but we were real concerned that we could do it, that you know, it could be done and done the right way. 
That is long, and apparently it was done the right way because the players generally, while they started out complaining about the uh, footing and the fact that the bounce and the surface was kind of loose, say that things have tightened up considerably and it is now a very acceptable clay court in the red clay European sense of the word. It looks beautiful from up here. Agassi broken three out of the first five serve games, but he has won his last five straight service games. I'll tell you what, some of those drop shots make some, some club players feel happy. <laughs> yeah, he must have it in his head that Fromberg's slow, but he's going to way too much. It's not paying off for him. I don't think it's so much that he is slow, but I, I think R Richard really doesn't have that good of a short game. He does sometimes when he gets there, he hasn't been doing anything. That's he did another. it again. Yeah. Mary, he, he told us, as you know, that he feels like uh, Bromberg, that is probably a vulnerable part of his game. But he's this played a couple of drop shots in this game that uh, have not been too good. Look at this. Yeah, he doesn't put anything. He just drops the head of the racket and lets the wrist go limp, and there's nothing to carry the ball over. Another one. Five in a row. White. Uh, Bromberg knows that he's made a big mistake there. That's on a 30 or point two. I mean, it's not waiting for when he's up 40 love or anything like that. I think maybe the first one he hit a winner on, that was maybe bad. He's hit... Nick and Kelly Bolletary there. So the thing is, these drop shots really aren't his game, like you said. I mean, he has the best power on the circuit. I think he ought to stay with what he does best. I'm not sure that I agree with that, Brad. I think he's made it a, a definite decision to put this drop shot in there to add variety to his game this year. That's right. Gee, that was a loose overhead. Do you think the lights... Are, well, how are the lights when you press? I think they're really good. I just think it's a nervous game for Agassi. And, you know, it's a, it's a big game. I can understand it. I mean, the, the way the stuff he's been putting together in this game just you know his tennis doesn't always make sense and once again on this side this is the side that keeps giving him trouble game in and game out does that prey on your mind sometimes brad when you realize that you've gotten broken from the same side so often I know myself that I think about it sometimes you sometimes you don't think that geez you can't win on this side yeah. from there being wrong footed again goes to that squash shot that real flick slice when he's out wide he's made too many errors on that side game point he's really let up on his serve the last three serves Cup for 1990. The USA is playing against Australia, their arch rivals for so many years. Started back in, let's see, 1905, was it? Up to Fraser with Fred Stolley. At courtside is Mary Carrillo. Brad Gilbert is with us as well. Andre Agassi in the first set went down, so Australia started out one set to nothing up. Then Agassi came back, one set all. We're in the third set. It's two games all. This is Richard Fromberg of Australia serving to Agassi. I think that's what the people really want to see from Andre, is him banging the ball. Well, that last uh, service game could well be the turning point of this set because Stromberg had a break point opportunity. You feel like the crowd really want to get into this thing, but they haven't really... There's nothing that they can get Andre, their teeth into. Andre really hasn't been able to string together like three or four big winners in a row. I mean, he's hit a couple of good shots here and a couple there, but he really hasn't strung together like, you know, five or six in a row like he can do. I mean, when he's hot, he can string together just so many winners. Yeah. Do you love also, I have the feeling, my friend, that in this stadium, as nice as this is for tennis, that the, the crowds are kind of a long way away from the court. It's not like they're breathing right down your neck. 
No, it's really not a, an intimate atmosphere, is it? There's 17,500 people here. Also, it's to me now that, that, uh, that Richard's picked up his game here a little bit. You know, it looked early in this set that it looked like Andre was ready to steamroll, and, and now it looks like uh, Richard's picked his game back up again. juiced up himself the crowd would really get into it but I, I don't think that Andre's really gotten that fired up yet gentle giant Richard Frumberg that's about his major complaint as you can see from him you can go days without hearing from Fromberg it's very very quiet he's yeah. sort of like Stephen Wright type guy dry humor when he uses it Of the man that you're looking at, Haggerson. I think if he was a baseball player, he'd be a little bit like Ricky Henderson. That went by you, the non baseball guys. No, here. not me, although I don't think he has the same kind of speed. We'll be back. That tonight is seating about 17 and a half thousand people. Agassi serving the Fromberg of Australia. St. Pete wants to be thought of as a big sports town. They've tried for 11 years to get a major league team, and now that they've lost the chance of getting the White Sox, they're hoping they can get an expansion team. Michael Jordan was down here playing an exhibition match. Wayne Gretzky's been here too. And they had major league uh, baseball preseason. And they've got the NC2As, the first round or two of the 94 NC2As here. So that's a big coup. Then uh, they had a hockey exhibition down here a few months ago. They had the largest crowd ever for a hockey game. Enthusiastic fans. That is long, Agassi. 40 love. Coasting in the Sun Coast Dome. In this game, anyway. Don't say coasting. <laughs> he's, he's lost two 40 love games. Billy Joel opened this place and 39,000 people were here. Uh, the record was New Kids on the Block at 42,000, but this will beat it over three days. They're expected to have over 50,000 fans in here. Game point. That's the game's the going. Dead even set all and three games all there. It has been a Davis Cup tie played in the past game from Petersburg back in 1954 in the days when the challenge round was still alive that was when all the other countries played against each other for the right to challenge the nation that had won the competition the year before the usa played cuba at the st pete tennis center and went on to win it against australia next couple of games you'll hear a lot from the Australian bench trying to get Fromberg through to a two set to one lead and I'm sure the same can be said for the American boys there they are Pat Cash John Fitzgerald and Ian Barclay Pat Cash's coach Ace number six his hip kind of almost so uh, an easy game relatively speaking because they have all been pretty hotly contested for Fromberg that's, and this is 
was not the time he should be going through the motions. We get him roll in the third set. Unbelievable. I mean, it should be 30 all right here. I mean, it's a really easy overhead. And then all of a sudden, you know, three all do. I mean, it's a big, you know, big point. What do you tell him, a guy like Agassi, when he's missed a couple of big overheads like he has on the sidelines, Brad? I don't, you know, I mean, it's a tough call. I don't, you know, I know it's tough for Tom to try to talk to him on the sidelines, but uh, I just think maybe right now he needs to pick up his intensity just a touch. What do you think, Freddie? No, I agree at this stage. They're going to, Fraser wants him to check the mark. And we all thought that one may be pretty close. Bruno Rabot out of his chair. Now that brings Gorman to his feet. So I thought he's doing his confirming report. You like to see that the umpire come out of the yeah. I do, yeah. And because he ran to that spot, he looked like he definitely knew where the mark was. One thing with a cold court, you can see him. In the third set, four games to three, it is one set all in the oh, first match of the Davis Cup. We'll be back. Want to play rock and roll tennis? Let's dance. Ah! Boom! The ball is... Louder, you got! Any questions? Left 7.30 p.m. tomorrow evening on the East Coast. That's all on ESPN tomorrow. This is Andre Agassi of the USA and Richard Fromberg of Australia battling it out. Agassi trailing 3 4 third set. And, and this is when the burners get turned up a little bit here to try and get that two sets to one lead. said all as we said Fromberg and Agassi are locked in a battle that is dead even in terms of numbers of points as well two hours have been played and 82 83 for Agassi in points well, the string on yep he's using a few of those today I think I use this many rackets in a month <laughs> You better play the same kind of game as he does. I mean, he just flails away at everything, and apparently the strings are very tightly strung. Must be very fine gut. Very yeah, he uses a very thin gauge gut. practicing that top spin love. I think you'll see some of that in our second match this evening. I'd say that's a horrible feeling when you, when you hit a decent slice like that and the guy can, you know, hit a good lob over a 6'5 guy. Horrible feeling. Yeah, Fromberg didn't really do a lot with that approach shot. Looks for it. He says, I know, I'm done. Another drop side attempt, but that one was, again, too long. I'd say he must have hit 20 drop shots, so maybe 10 this set. It's not like he's hitting them, you know, he's hitting them from behind the baseline. So, in other words, it's got to be an incredibly good drop shot to really work anyway, because uh, when you hit from that far back, your opponent can see it coming, have time to react. And he's also not getting them very short, he's getting them awfully close to the service line. Yeah. See, the whole team was talking, Brad, about the fact that, uh, you know, their, their take on Richard Fromberg was that he moved well side to side. He could cover the width of the court, but not the length up and back. Big break point here. Now, I see that completely opposite. I think he moves okay up and back. I don't think he moves well at all. I think too. He doesn't move well at all side to side. I think it's a lot like Omez. Broken three times, Fromberg. He has another chance. It's the same side again. This is like the jinx side for him. Be. 
It was, wasn't it? Oh, great he had uh, Agassi on the defensive. And if Jeez. he had won that point, he'd be serving for the third set. Sometimes it's just one point here, one point there can make the difference. All three of us are oohing and on up here. <laughs> Game point. Good extension on that serve, and you see he retreats behind the baseline, gets himself set, shoulder rotation, jumps off the ground, that's where he generates the pace. That's great stuff. And that's, that's the Davis Cup cut. They're, they got it in their barber shop, you know, all over town. What a what a tremendous game for Fromberg to have lost that last game. If he loses this match, he might be having nightmares about that last game. That Not only forehand, that, especially that forehand, especially. Not only that last game, he's had break points on two occasions, and I mentioned the last time. A, a very important situation when you're playing your first match for Australia. When you get the, the third set, you've got those opportunities. You've got to make them work for you. And he's let Agassi off the hook twice. Oh. He's won the last two or three service games fairly easy, so I think that that'll allow him to take more chances on his return game. he has had in Davis Cup competition possibly can come through. He's won eight and lost three representing the U.S. Kronberg's first match, of course, in Davis Cup competition. And it's moments like this when it can count. Agassi's actually lost three of his last four Davis Cup matches. He started off his first year, won all three of them. That's the U.S. win. Seems to be taking his time just a little bit more. That's important for him. If you kind of break down the strength of these two players, you would say, or you'd come to the conclusion that Agassi should win this match easily, but Kronberg has surprised him. Uh, he needs to do more. He's had very good success when he's hit the short backhand and then gone to the forehand, make him run, and then that's when Richard tries to hit a winner from a bad position. Oh! 15.30. experience right there at 15.30, knowing the right time to go to the net. He doesn't like to go to the net, Agassi, but he gets the second serve. Does what he wants. Look at this ball of volley there. He got the patented, huh? patented volley, and then the overhead sets it up for a couple of break points. Amazing that he gets away with that. Top. That's a risky shot. I mean, that was below the net. That wasn't like it was, you know, a shoulder-high volley. Two break points. Still break point. 
Somebody's told Andre Agassi that this is the shot to play against Richard Fromberg. He's won some big points on it, not this time. Fromberg sitting on the forehand. I think he's definitely lost more points than he's won on he the has. drop shot. But he's hit him on such big points. <laughs> Four out of ten for Agassi. Not a good percentage yet, is it? Another chance. But a big serve from the man from Australia. Look at the extension on this. Slow on the backswing and accelerate up at the top of the swing. There's been so many chances for both the fellows as said. Andre, you know, it went all and Fromberg with two chances in different games. Oh. Make that eight aces now for Fromberg. It's not a bad time to hit a couple of aces, huh? Do you remember back to their match in Cincinnati? Agassi had quite a few opportunities on big points, and Fromberg delivered that huge first serve on occasions there as well. Oh. That was a trifecta. This is how the top half of the world group looked when things started this year, and in fact how it looks now. Germany over the Netherlands, the men losing in a big surprise to Argentina, maybe not that big a surprise because Boris Becker didn't play and they played in Argentina. Australia came through against France, as you can see, on grass, against New Zealand at home on grass, and again at home um, in their semi-final. USA are against, uh, at least played against Austria, before that the USA in the first round against Mexico and then Czechoslovakia. All of those matches, of course, you saw right here on ESP. And the last one against Austria from Vienna, this is now the final match of the Davis Cup for this year. USA is playing against Australia for the Davis Cup. Do you think Bromberg should take a chance in this game? I think if he gets a couple of second serve, he should have a crack at it. Well, he has two choices, doesn't he? He can either do that or he can... Uh, Wait for Andre to yeah, crack it. Ex I was exactly <laughs> waiting for him to go for one of those drop shots. That last game, 15-40, he hit that drop shot. <gasps> Fromberg's just not getting to the ball wide with the forehand, so maybe that physical fitness is uh, starting to come into this match. They've been out there for over two hours, two hours and 11 minutes. Well, those drop shots, Fred. Yeah, chased a lot of drop shots. I think that shot right there is the reason why he doesn't play as well on fast courts, because when the ball gets real big there, he ends up chipping a lot of forehand. <laughs> no chip on that forehand, and he wins the point down. 30-15 in the Yeah, John Fitzgerald there, the leader of the That's cheering the Australians. Great stuff. You know, he almost reminds me of a baseball player that likes everything in his zone, like the wheelhouse. If it's in his zone, he can really hit it, but if he's outstretched, he makes mistakes. It's almost like a guy chasing that high fast one. It looks good, but it's not good to hit. <sighs> Uh, what big points the next couple are. Unbelievable. Australia versus the USA. You don't see the names of the players up there. Oh boy, that makes a difference when you're out there too. They call Australia or USA instead of your surname. I guess he goes for the big one regardless of the... The yeah. importance of the point, doesn't he? Well, Fromberg sort of let, let up on that. He had the shot, the short ball, and uh, decided to just keep it in play and then retreat to the baseline. The guy's been giving you a few mistakes there. You know, your tendency is maybe to wait one more. Fromberg a little lucky there because once again he had given up the short ball. Agassi just overplayed it a little bit. 
This is awfully reminiscent of the 4-5 game in the, in the first set. Yeah. Deuce. He's hit two lines in this game. Well, that was inside the baseline, that one. It's, I think it, Fred, I think it's, it skipped off the line a little bit. It took a funny little hop there. It must have maybe just hit a piece of it or a piece of dirt or something, but it skidded underneath Agassiz's uh, racket. So this is break point as uh, you put a quick glimpse of us up here, not far. It's amazing how things can turn around. Set point here. Set point, excuse me. 4 all 15 40 was looking great for Agassiz. Boom, now it's set point for Fromberg in less than five minutes. Second serve. That's wide and it is set. Two sets to Australia. And one to the USA, a big surprise here. Andre Agassi, the number one player for the USA, is in real trouble. We'll be back. Just when you thought you were on top of your game, you've got to raise it to a whole new level. Australian Open champion Yvonne Wendell, French Open champion Andres Gomez, Wimbledon champion Stefan Edberg, and U.S. Open champion Pete Sampras are just some of the world's greatest players vying for the biggest prize in tennis history. The first ever $6 million Grand Slam Cup. December 11th through the 16th, only on ESPN. We're running the feature right now. Richard Fromberg of Australia is leading Andre Agassi by two sets to one in this first match of the Davis Cup. Best of five matches. This is a best of five set match in this first match. So a big surprise with Richard Fromberg in real trouble. The players are going to take a break of just about 10 minutes. That's the Davis Cup rule. As a matter of fact, uh, it is only in Davis Cup that these 10-minute breaks are allowed. The two players will go to their respective locker rooms and will talk to their respective captains, of course. Well, Harry Hopman is one of our sport's greatest names. Certainly, his he is... Set three, he was down four all 15 40. It was 15 40 for Agassi. I mean, Fromberg really has played, you know, that's to my mind, that those are the, the important numbers from those uh, from the sets one and three, and that's why this kid is, is ahead. No doubt about it, Mr. Brad Gilbert, that this, I'm sure to you as well, has been a big surprise. I think that, you know, as Mary said, that four all game was very big, but uh, I think the drop shots of what have really gotten him into trouble here. Well, can he carry on with it? Two sets to one. They're going to wait a while before the spectators really settle down here. The crowd have not had the opportunity to get involved, to impose themselves on this match. Five matches are played in the Davis Cup ties. This is the first of five. The second singles will be played tonight, a doubles tomorrow, and the reverse singles on Sunday. This is set four, with Australia leading it by two sets to one. Fraser obviously at the break just said to his man, stay with what you got. What do you think Tom Gorman so might have said to Andre oh, Agassi? Well, I j actually, I just had a run down the locker room there. I think they were trying to pump him up. His brother was trying to pump him up. But uh, I think they were really trying to tell him to use that big forehead. Neil Fraser, of course, I felt would just go in and try and keep Fromberg. It's his first Davis Cup match. So you two sets to one up. Keep doing what's been working for you. He's got some big fair serves in. He's got to give that slice forehand a bit of a miss, the one out wide. He's got to try and keep that in play. And he must, at all costs, keep the ball deep. I think this game can give uh, Richard a little trouble because he's never experienced the break before in Davis Cup. And I think Andre's experienced that a little bit. It's a it's, it's weird feeling going out in no warm-up. Again, he comes up with the big serve, ace number nine, when he's been in trouble from Berg. You, you don't like the break, do you? 
Brad? I, I don't like it because, you know, we don't play on the circuit like that. And, uh, you know, you can stiffen up. You don't know if you should shower or what, what you should do in, in that 15 minutes. Nine aces for Fromberg. You two boys were saying that this is one of the, well, you were afraid that were the, the crucial elements in this game. Again, a big point. Got the short ball. Executed. Both these fellows wear headbands. And if you have a look at the one with, uh, that Fromberg's got on, it's got a couple of stars on it. You wonder what team he's on at one <laughs> stage. 30 or. I say that kind of casually, but again, Andre Agassi up. Love 30 in this game. Let it slip. He's had a lot of trouble closing out games. Well, normally, he, he's really good at closing out. Great point. But I said to Cliff when we first came back, I felt that Agassi got nervous towards the end of that third set. He had uh, opportunities and started to miss, and uh, the two shots that he missed to lose the set were way off course. I think uh, that's possible. I also think he, he might have been getting a little bit tired, you know, trying to close out the points very quickly. Four out of 11, if I can see. It's too short. This is a live shot of Florida's Suncoast Dome from the MetLife Blimp. The captains are Mike Fitzpatrick and John McQuirk up there. The Suncoast Dome on Florida's West Coast. It looks a little bit like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, doesn't it? This is a big game for Andre because this is the side that's been giving him the trouble the whole match. Really doesn't look anything like the Leaning Tower of Pisa does, but at least it kind of looks like it. Who said it looked like a Leaning Tower of Pisa? <laughs> I just did. That's, that's weak. <laughs> I'm really surprised that no one told Agassi to, to leave that drop shot at home. It worked for him here, but at least in this one, see, he's inside the court on this, and it helps it work work better. You can get a lot, you can hit that thing a lot closer to the net if you yourself are closer to the net, exactly. and it worked. Mario, exactly. Also, the drop shot's a lot better when you're in a positive position at the point. It's tough to hit it when you're in a defensive position. Oh. Yeah, Fromberg was behind the baseline by a couple of three feet when he hit that last time. That also helps. But, I mean, I expect at least to set, you know, if he wins it, but I expect him to be a lot more aggressive here. That's what they were really telling him on the changeover. When he's aggressive, he'll kill you. I mean, when he's being aggressive, it means he's loose and he's going for his shots, and it's very, very difficult to turn Andre Agassi away like that. I mean, you have to get him into a defensive posture on the court is really the play. I mean, under pressure, he still hits hard, but he's tighter when he does it, so he makes more mistakes. Be a little bit like Vinny Johnson in the microwave, just turn it around. Why doesn't tennis have those kind of nicknames? <laughs> I love that. You know, we need that, huh? Well, the Aussies, Frommy, Cashy, Fitzy, you know. Fiery. The killer. That's Cahill. He'll be up next in the singles. That uh, disputed call man, Lance Pearson, got out of his chair to check Mark and. That was why some of the 
but you couldn't see that it was wide. We were astounded that he missed the overhead, but it wasn't a missed. The point was over. 40-30, game point. I don't think Andres had one easy game on this side, huh? No, really. More than that, he's lost it at least three times. That one is called good, though. Bromberg checking the mark. He's not going to get any pleasure, apparently. Agassi holds on. It's two games to love. There's the pier that you see from the blimp. It is where the Davis Cup draw was held. As of next year, by the way, the Davis Cup draw is not going to hold anywhere near the same significance because on the first day, the number one player on the computer from one country will play the number two player from the other country. with a view to having the top players playing against each other in a live match on Sunday. I, for one, think that's a terrible rule. Shocker. And I like it, as you know. Agassi measuring his shots very well in this rally. Sets that one up pinpoint accuracy down the line. I think that's his best chance to try to hit his way out of trouble. Oh! Gotta wait for the right shot. Yeah, but I mean, it, I'm, well, well, I, what I'm really saying is that he can dictate, you know, he can you know, get, hit, hit hard, get a short ball, then put it away. He needs know. to be the puncher, not the punchy. Yeah. Something like that. Like that. That's what they were really saying to him in, in the locker room on the, on the changeover, that when he does get stretched out the forehand, he tends to chip that thing, and so that's when he can really attack. So he needs to attack his strength because he seems to go for that, as Freddie calls it, that squash forehand. That gets him into trouble. He's got a break already in the set and has love 30 in this game. Oh! These are the points that he just hasn't been, been winning enough of so far, huh? Why don't you like the idea of that you'd have on a Sunday still a live match between the number one players playing against each other? Well, I think it takes the uh, human element out of the luck of the draw. I think, you know, depending on, and it depends on how they use the ranking, the one and two players, whether it's nominated by the captains, whether they go by the ITF rules, whether they go by the ATP. It, they're they're turning the it. Computer, the language is an approved ranking system. Of course, the ATP yeah, Tour and the ITF have had their problems, and it's it's still not clear which uh, which well, ranking system will be used to determine one and two. Well, there is only one at this point. The, the only the, co the controversy is, is whether the ITF are going to start their own ranking system. I sincerely hope they don't. Otherwise, we'll be like boxing. You know, which system are you going by? Well, I think there's thirty two big problems with that. Like, like in, in a couple of cases, how do you determine which guy is better on which surface? You know, one guy might be ranked 10, but he might be the best player in the world on clay. Or exactly. It's, 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 th it's crazy. But it's been passed. And Fromberg again, from a bad position, comes back and holds on. Agassi, two games to one with a break in set four. Agassi has a break, two games to one in, in the fourth set, but he's down by two sets to one. Big surprise here. Australia and the USA in the final round of the Davis Cup for this year. We're coming to you from the Florida Suncoast Dome in St. Petersburg, Florida. East to West here in Florida, by the way, just over 100 miles. It's not that far. Not that wide. Well, I live over the west coast. In North Manly Beach, Turnbury there, a five-hour drive. So that hundred miles takes a fair time to get across. You get to go across the state and then uh, from Naples up to North this area. Oh. And uh, this is west central. Definitely, and uh, Tampa, St. Pete, of course, uh, very much in the news. The moment, not only because of the day was cut, more and more people coming to live in this area. I'd say if this match goes five sets, what do you think? Uh, it's a good chance that Chang uh, Cahill match won't be able to finish tonight.
shot. The convoy was looking for the little drop shot. Agassi behind the baseline. Look at the racket here, how far in front of of the body it is. He meets that ball out in front, firm wrist, and just bunts that ball into the corner. with a service break in the match. He had 4-2 at one stage. The second set from 2 over, he ran out the second set. Yep. 4-2 in the second set. And Drop shot of the oh. doesn't work. The crowd applaud game to act. Grew up a lot of drop shots. <laughs> I don't think I want to play that. That's a shot best played at the club tennis level. Three-one Agassi. but it's very effective good control he's worked very hard on that over the last two or three years his first trip away just did not have a smooth service motion at all Ray Ruffles the Australian coach who travels with him worked tireless hours on that 